Hi, welcome to HTML5 session. So, in the previous session, we have understood about basics of HTML and now we will start our journey on HTML5. So, let us have a quick rundown over the agenda for HTML5. First, we will look into a little bit about history and overview. Then we will check about browser compatibility. What are the new tags and attributes which has been provided in HTML5? How the forms and forms level attributes and input forms have been provided in HTML5? What is SVG? Basically, it is a scalar vector graphic. How do you use this in HTML5? Canvas is a very nice way to draw graphic and animation in HTML5. WAI area is not in scope. Video and audio, how do you include in video and audio in HTML5? Now, there were challenges before, but now we will see that what HTML5 does. What is offline storage? What is geolocation? RWD will not be in scope. So, other than that, we will cover majority or most of the HTML5 which is required for us to understand this new technology. So, let us get set up for playing along. Okay? So, first thing what you need is that some editor where you will write this HTML5 code. Now, to develop HTML5 code, there are large number of editors in the market. Some are free, some are paid you might want to get into something which is free first unless that is not serving your purpose. Okay? One of them which people use is Textpad. Next one is Aptana Studio. There is a free and community edition. There is a paid one as well, but uh, do not take the paid one. Try first the free one and see if it works. If it works, then no need. There is another one called Blue Griffin coffee cup, Dreamweaver CS5, Aloha, Mercury editor and many more. This is just a small list. So, you can understand that how many are there. Okay? What you have to do is that pick up any one which you like. My personal favorite is this one. This one I like the most and I use it most of the time, but you can use any one which you like. If you have a budget and you are working for a large corporation and you can spend some money, then it, you can try this one as well. So, this one is little expensive, but very nice. Okay? So, this one is uh, one of the best but it is a paid version and all. You can try out the trial version as well, but others are as well good. So, let us start. Now, we have to just understand what are the various browsers which support this HTML5 because HTML5 is a new standard. It is still evolving. It is not yet complete. So, HTML5 standard is being still designed and developed. So, it is still a evolving standard and some of the browsers support it, some of the browsers do not support it. But to develop this, good idea is to download couple of browsers and test your HTML code in one of these browsers. So, and the minimum I would suggest that you should download at least these three browsers, Firefox, Chrome and Opera. Internet Explorer IE 9 is not good, so wait for IE 10. Once IE 10 comes, it will be a, there will be a good support for HTML5 as well. But for the time being, I would suggest that you should download these three browsers, at least these two browsers. If not these, then these two browsers you should definitely put it and test your code against this. As of now, the best browser which is the which has the maximum support is this one. Okay. So, this is the one which has the maximum support. So, Chrome browser 
has got best HTML5 support. There are a lot of other browsers which you can try out. Now, if you want to learn little more about HTML5 and you are looking for the best place to go for, in addition to this video, you can also watch and sorry, you can also read lot of the stuff on the internet. So, here are few tutorials and books for you. Go to the Google search engine and type HTML5 as a one word and the first 10 links which comes are the best place for tutorials on HTML5. So, read the first 10 links, all are great and that should be good enough for you to learn about HTML5. Now, in case you want to read some book because you love reading books and you read and understand from the book better than from the website, then there are two good books which are again our personal recommendation. You may like some other book, but our recommendation is Head First HTML5 and CSS3. Very nicely written book, very good. And then there is HTML5 for masterminds that is little advanced, but uh, once you master head first HTML, you can go for HTML5 for mastermind. That is pretty advanced and very complicated topics are dealt and lot of advanced things are mentioned there. Here is a brief look about the book itself, HTML5 for masterminds and head first HTML5 programming. So, this, these are the books inside here. You can buy these books, not very expensive. Now, let us understand why HTML5 suddenly became important. Is it that just it came a few months back and it has suddenly become not really HTML5 the standard has been there for last 4 or 5 years slowly and slowly it is working out. But what happens is that last number of IT software companies which are the leading companies in terms of the innovation in the web technologies like Google, Facebook, YouTube, Apple, Vimeo, Microsoft, all of these companies have slowly and slowly started realizing the value of HTML5 and started supporting the HTML5 standard and they are building the products around this HTML5 technology. So, because of the support and push by large multinational corporation around HTML5, now HTML5 has become a very solid, good well established standard based technology and HTML5 now represents a more practical, more semantic, more functional web. What it means is that lot of practical problems which were there in HTML 2, 3, 4 and even XHTML 1.0, those practical problems are solved, more semantic. Now based on the HTML page, just by seeing the HTML page, somebody can understand it much better. So, that is called more semantic, more functional web. There are lot of functionality which has been added which can help you to create the graphic and animation and all of these things you will understand once we learn about various features of HTML5. So, just wait for that. CSS3 makes common visual elements easy programmatic and not image based. There are a lot of good support for browser for HTML5 and CSS3 today, especially Chrome, Opera, Firefox has a pretty good support. There are work around and practical trick how to support the older browser along with the newer browser. So, somebody has a older version of Firefox and new version of Firefox then how do you write the HTML5 syntax in such a way that if it is a new browser, it will utilize the new tags. If it is a old browser, it will utilize the old tags and there are tricks and strategies to use that. Okay. Now, let us understand how does this HTML5 standard came in the picture. It was long time back around 2004 when some of the company like Opera, Mozilla and Apple presented a competing vision of evolution of HTML at W3C workshop. But somehow 
lot of people were in the fever of XML based standard called XHTML and other things. So they did not like this and the whole concept and idea of a next generation of HTML was voted down. In 2005, there was another but still few people, we were not very convinced with the idea of putting it down. They formed another group called Web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group and they continued working on that outside W3C. So although W3C did not like the idea, some of the companies joined hand together and they continued working on developing HTML5 standard and specification or next generation of HTML. In 2007, W3C also finally realized that HTML5 is really a standard which everyone is looking forward to and it is something that could benefit large number of product development and innovation in the web technology world. So finally in 2007, W3C created a HTML working group with HTML5 as the foundation. In 2009, W3C discontinued the old XHTML 2.0 working group because they did not want XHTML to be used now onwards. They wanted HTML5 to replace all old HTML versions and standards. So finally by 2009, W3C was strongly committed towards HTML5 standard. But because of this, now there are two places where HTML5 discussions and standards are evolving. One is obviously W3C spec which is more authenticative and most of the time people go here but obviously W3C's <coughs> WH80WZ is another place where W3C stand where HTML5 standards are evolving and WH80WZ is much super set than W3C. So if you can follow W, what WZ you will get to know lot more innovation and much faster the things are moving in what WZ that compared to W3C. So the discussions, the meetings, the standards, everything in what WZ goes much faster than W3C. What are the principles of HTML5? The first principle says that in HTML5, it should be backward compatible. So what it means is that if you write HTML code and a browser has HTML4 code, it should still run. So that is the backward compatibility. Well-defined non-draconian error handling. So it should be very well-defined, not like XML where any tag can be defined by anybody and there should be a nice error handling as well. Practical applications and usage. HTML5 should have a real practical application and use. It should not just look like another set of tags. It should really solve real life problem. And when we will go into each of those features of HTML5, you will, I will explain you what real life problem it solves. Embracement of JavaScript interaction with markup. In HTML5, there are lot of changes not just done on the HTML tags, but lot of changes have been done to make sure that JavaScript is used for utilizing the new HTML tags like canvas, geolocation, offline storage, all of these new HTML tags requires a good usage of new JavaScript objects. So JavaScript, CSS and HTML tags, all of the three are working very much together jointly and evolving with each other. It is an open process obviously because it is discussed in W3C and what WG both are open organization so it is based on open process. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to learn about something about HTML5. So far we have discussed about little bit about history, standard, basic principle of HTML5 and all those things. Now what we are going to do is we are going to understand few things about HTML5. First thing we have to understand is that what are the things which are at a high level what is different in HTML5. Now the first different is the document structure itself. 
what it means is that the way the structure of the document looks like from the first line to second line to last line that structure has changed little bit so we'll discuss about what do you mean by document structure has changed in html5 next we'll understand about in html we have heard that there is a form right earlier session of basic html we discussed about the form now there are few things about the form which is new in html5 that is what we'll discuss about now inside the form there are various types of input html used to support like text input button input multi line input radio button drop down box all are the, the various types of input which was supported by older version of html now in html5 there are newer type of inputs which are it is supporting like url email all of those are supported now in form as a input type we'll discuss about all those in form input attributes next thing is global attributes there are a lot of attributes which are possible to now apply globally like drag and drop so those are the attributes which are globally applied for all the elements and tags in html last but not last but most of important is that new set of elements and tags like canvas geolocation these are the new set of elements or tags in html5 so we'll discuss about them as well so first change is document structure form attributes form input attributes global attributes element tag most of the time we'll be working on this one and this one okay so form input attributes and element type so majority of the changes are done into this area and this area there are changes in this and this as well but the changes are not that big and here as well so out of these five most of the changes happen here okay and here so let us understand about each of those changes compared to html4 or 3 into html5 so we will start now with a document structure the first thing is document structure now in document structure if you see what html5 says is that very simple If you are going back to HTML 4 or 3, the first line which says HTML is basically what it means is that you are writing about indirectly there is a doc type which you have to define and then you have to say a public naming space. This is a naming space called W3C DTD X HTML 1.0 transitional EN and then there is a DTD, this DTD. So basically the doc type and this one all of this you have to mention as a first line in any html page when you write it that was till html 4.0 and this is what is this this says that the html document which i will create here that will follow a dtd called transitional dtd which is defined at this location okay but in html 5 they change this way of declaring what they said is that now you don't have to write all of this you just say doc type html and browser will understand that it is html5 you don't have to do all of this now this has simplified the writing and you don't have to worry about that whether i will make a mistake while typing the url some character or text or dot is forgot anything all that error is gone now you have to write just doc type html so effectively what it means is that anything after this point till here is gone so this is the new way of html5 to declare a doc type so html5 only you have to declare doc type html not required anything else now the another change which is a small change which has been done in html5 is when you define a character set why you need a character set character set basically says that there are various kinds of character sets utf8 utf16 iso all of these are character set basically what it means is that 
the HTML page which you are developing will include characters from that set of characters defined by a standard organization. So, what is different between ISO and UTF-8 or UTF-16? First understand that there are two type of character set one is ISO other is UTF-8 or UTF-16 you might have seen about NC character set right now NC character set or ISO what it means is that NC character set especially in NC it only includes the standard alphabetical and numeric and few characters which is used in US and Europe but if you are using UTF-8 or UTF-16 character that will include all the language character as well it could include Japanese character it could include Mexican German Chinese Indian all those characters are included into that one so to make sure that the browser understand that the character of your page is from which character set you should declare a character set for your web page otherwise it will use some default behavior but let us assume that you want to create a web page in Chinese and you do not declare the character set it will not work so you should declare that this is the character set this html page will follow now earlier what we used to do is that we used to write meta tag and then after meta tag we will say actually content type and then in the end char set equals to this one in html5 declaring a character set has become very easy what we do here is now you just say meta char set equals to utf8 or iso or nc or utf16 but just very simple char set equals to utf8 all other things like this all of those things is not required none of these are required you just say meta char set that's it okay so that makes very single now other thing is that if a value of a attribute is a single only one attribute only one value is there for an attribute then you do not need the double quote and it will work fine in html5 that is the new changes and if there is a single standalone tags are needed for html5 only in this one it is not required the other change which they have done is that like doc type char set there is another attribute called lang so html has various attribute now this one also in the new html5 has changed like this english us now why somebody will use the lang attribute can you tell me why we declare lang attribute in html page the reason is that if you declare lang attribute in html page some of the search engine will use the corresponding character and language to search your page properly otherwise they will not understand that whether i should use this german character mexican character portuguese there are 200 different languages in the world now do you think that your html page will be passed by the search engine and tried in 200 languages before it figures out which language it is so what effectively happens is that if you do not declare your page that it is in chinese and you declare chinese language search engines will not be able to parse it properly and it will not be able to take advantage of search engine optimization so that's why you need to have the language done the other usage of this language meta attribute is there are a lot of software which is used for reading the html pages or web pages they will not be able to read this html page or web page properly if it is written in a non-english language and language is not specified because that software will not understand whether these characters are from which language so it is very important that you declare this language equals to en dash us if it is going to be in non-english language so that is pretty much says that length is you can find the various values of this one at here what are the en us german japanese and all so your basic html5 structure now will looks like this
Okay. So, it is started with this, then we had a lang, then we have a char set, then we put a title and we switch something like that. So, this is what your new HTML5 structure will look like. Very simple, nothing here, not much typing here, not much typing here. So, this is what is the new basic HTML5 structure. Now, we will go to the form attribute for HTML5. 